Oh, well, hello, welcome. I'm making an onion pie today. This is a recipe from 17, I believe 54, from Hannah Glass. Uh, here in Colonial America, we didn't use too awful, too awful many recipe books, and recipes were just handed down. But Hannah Glass recorded these receipts, as, as they were called, um, for cooks to use that were in the employ of other people. So we were lucky to have this recipe. And this onion pie has onions, apples, and potatoes in it which sounds like a very odd combination but you all the things are cut up all right cut and sliced Just like this now you know of all the things that we do in history the memories of things that have happened before come very clear it's funny how foods that we prepare remind us of things that have happened and speaking of England and my home in Scotland and now my time in the colonies reminds me of a story which I'm very fortunate to be here to tell when we first got to America we came over with James Murray and we had to fight with Reed's company because Mr. Reed was sick and so James Murray took over command of the battalion and this was the battalion that went to Fort William Henry in New York State at the very end of Lake George. We got to the end of Lake George and the women and the baggage were all kept there. We were held back and my husband joined the other men. He joined the other men as they went off to Carillon. You know, it's a hard thing. I said my goodbyes to him because I've said my goodbyes a hundred times over. Because whither thou goest, I shall go. And whereest thou lie down, I shall lie down. Your family shall be my family. And whereest thou die, so shall I also. I take that very seriously, but they kept us behind at Fort William Henry. So in waiting there, I was speaking to a young woman, trying to calm her down. So I told her of the days in Scotland and what it was like because she was born here and she wasn't as familiar with following the army as I was and I'd hold her baby and I told her tales and she was very upset because she'd been in one battle before and her own infant child was there on the ground while well, they were doing the burial detail and her child was on the ground climbing amongst the bodies. That wasn't pleasant for her, so she was a little, well, uneasy about all of it. So, on going up to Carillon, at one point the boats were on Lake George for as far as you could see, three miles out. All of the water was covered with boats. There were flat boats and bateaus. They had to cover, carry the artillery and all the men up there. So I stayed behind and I waited. And I waited. And I waited. Well, it wasn't awful long before the men came back, some of them. This young lady's husband managed to come back. That was very good for her, but my own husband, my own husband did not. So I took off to look for him. Hmm was a sad thing. As I went along, there were people that were dying. There were wounded men, injured people, and they were telling the story, telling the gruesome, gruesome story of how Montcalm's army had taken sapling trees and cut them down and put them on a hillside within the area of the fort, of Fort Carillon. They put these trees so that the branches faced outward and downhill. They cut the ends of the trees, the branches, and left them, and so they were all pointed. This was the abatis. All right, and so then the Frenchmen stood behind at the trunk end, and they were able to look through these trees and fire on the advancing English army. Well, they were pretty, our army was pretty far out, but the Highland forces, having no word for retreat, decided to press on. We're not real sure. We're not so sure that those Frenchmen that were there 
that those Frenchmen that were there possibly were yelling out insults in Gaelic because most of the Frenchmen did know Gaelic, especially those that were familiar with the Highlands and had left the Highlands with Charles Edward Stewart. So yelling out insults, probably the equivalent of um, your mother serves many men. And the, Highland, the Highlanders, especially the 42nd, broke forces, left their commanders, and just took off. They took off. They were going to beat this abbotee, and they went and they ran, and man after man, falling on these branches, falling on these branches, and being impaled, man crawling over man. And meanwhile, the French are just shooting straight through. They're able to shoot straight through the abbotee, wounding, killing, man after man after man. The commanding officers who were behind were yelling to come back. You're not following the orders. Well, it didn't go very well. Actually, a couple of men really did cross and make it through to the other side. But it was a terrible, terrible disaster. They were killed as soon as they got over the French. Hmm. So I found out these stories as I walked up there. I never did find my husband. It was just about the saddest thing ever. <sighs> the hard thing about being a Highland woman is I have all the memories of the past, plus the memories of now that we're building daily. And all I can think of is growing old with my husband. There's a song that we sang about growing old about growing old with a man that you love. And it's called John Anderson, my Joe John. John Anderson, my Joe John, when we were first acquaint, your locks were like the ravens, your bonny brow was brent. But now your brow is bell, John, your locks are like the snow. But blessings on your frosty prow, John Anderson, my Joe. John Anderson, my Joe, John. We climbed the hills together, and many a canty day, John, we've spent with one another. But now we must go down, John, and hand in hand we'll go. And we'll sleep together at the foot, John Anderson, my Joe. Flower is so dear. Flower is just so dear. And I was able to come by some. So I have approximately two cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt. I have a paper of lard here. There we go. And I'll cut the lard in just like this. Of course, eventually I'll be going to using my fingers, which make a very, very nice tool. But to keep the crust from getting too greasy and to keep it flaky, I try to cut it in as much as possible with my knives. Quite often you hear about you blend a pie crust until it takes on a pea consistency. That means peas. So I'll get to that point. And I'll just gently rub it around here to break up the pieces. There. That'll do. Five tablespoons of water. There's one, two, three, four, five. And I'll also go back to using my knife. And I'll cut this in. People think the 
lard is such a bad thing. It's not, it's just another fat, like butter, only it comes from a pig, and you see how snowy white it is? Here's my flour. And I'll spread that out on my pastry cloth, like that. I'll gather up my dough, and see it's still pretty crumbly, but when I start working it, then it'll come nicely together. I'm gonna knead it a little bit. It's not quite like kneading dough, uh, kneading bread, but it's the same sort of action. You're still adding a little bit more flour to it. You don't want to overwork it because it will get hard, but I'm doing this just to make sure that it's a little bit more pliable. And you put some flour on the larding pin, you put some flour on everything. And moving along pretty quickly here. You don't want the pin to get it all dry. I make my crusts as my mother did, as my grandmother did, and her mother before her. Same recipe. All right, so now I'm going to pull it up and lay it in there. Now I'll cut off the extra for the top crust. All right, now that's ready to go. I need to get two eggs, some milk, salt, and pepper. I need my mortar and pestle for my pepper. I'll get that going first. Pepper is such a, an important ingredient. This is imported from India. And it adds so much flavor. Have that all ground up. And I'll have two eggs. Here's one. Here's the second one. I have my two eggs and I'm going to put in a half a cup of milk, which is, I'm gonna leave about this much in here. What do you think? I think that's probably about it. Give that a stir. Put my pepper in. And my nutmeg. Nutmeg was also, also came from far. I'll grate this. I save all the little, ow. I save all the little bits and I grate them, grind them up with a pepper, with the um, mortar and pestle, and I do that at, when I'm all finished. All right, so I've got my nutmeg, now I need to put some salt in here. Um, I believe about a teaspoon of salt. And we'll get this stirred up. No, don't splash on there. There we go. Now I have our prepared onions and potatoes and apples. All right, now I'm going to pour this over top. There we go. And I'll pinch together the edges, just lightly like this. Pick it up. And I'll trim the edges of it. Without trimming my fingers. Now 
or my wrist. And then I will seal the edge like this. All I'm doing is putting my fingers like this and squishing like that. And that's what makes that real pretty edge. All right, now this is ready to go into the Dutch oven. I have a rack inside here that will hold the um, pie off the bottom a little bit and these ears will make it so that I can lift it out without burning my fingers. Oh, I almost forgot to vent the top. So let's see, I think I'll put a heart in today. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice one. I'm going to put a heart in there. There we go. And I'll put that in here like this. Put the lid on the Dutch oven. And now I'm going to take this to the fire. This is really, really, really hot. One, two, three, four, five. Done. That's about 400 degrees. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move these away even farther. There we go. Now, what I have here is a trivet. I'm going to use this to keep the, keep the pie in the Dutch oven off of the ground. We'll get that big piece out of there. All right, so this will go in. And then I'll take my pie. None of this is light. And I will carefully put this in. Nope. And I'll put some coals right on top of it, just like that. And then we will wait about 30 minutes till I start seeing steam come out the sides. When I see steam coming out the sides, I know we're just about there. All right. So I believe our pie is ready now. So let's go take a look. Let's see if I can get enough of the coals off of here. They seem pretty well burned down. That's not so bad. Let me lift this right out of here. Onto the ground. Let's see what we have. This is the, the reveal. It's always very exciting. Oh, it came out beautifully. Just a little extra browning on the top, but I don't think that that'll make it bad at all. You see if I can't center this and now I'm going to use my S hooks that I have here and I'm going to lift this up by those ears that are in there that I showed you to begin with. There we go. Now I'm going to walk very carefully. I'd hate to lose it at this point. And here we are. Now I'll get my knife. Who wants pie? Now this is going to be pretty hot, but I'll hold it like this. I'll serve my guest from this side. The first piece of pie is never the pretty one. We all know that. So let's try for a prettier one. Get some bottom crust and some top crust. Well, look at that. The onions and the Potatoes are all in there, also very nice. So let's have a taste of this from what we have here. All right, let me taste this. Oh, wonderful. Well, I'm sorry uh, not everybody can taste this, but here it is, our onion pie from Hannah Glass. Thank you for coming to visit me today. Hope you had a good time. And now that you're all so hungry, step up and have some of this.